That's, that's going on. For real. I can't believe it.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Comedy Bar Chicago presents the Sook After Dark with Al Jam and Mona Abermashan. Tonight's show, Sam Norton, Mickey Housley, Gwen LaRocca, Joey Villa Gomez, with special guest Jeff Pivick and Red Rum. And now, put your hands together for your hosts, Al Jam and Mona Abermashan. What were, you, were you looking at that girl's in her situation? Were you? Yeah, uh, Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Yay! Good night here at the Comedy Bar for the premiere of the Soup After Dark. Soup After Dark, baby. I'm your host, Al Jam. I'm Mona Abermasham. And together, oh, wait, we rhyme. That's uh, just dumb. That's dumb. Right? Yeah, That's a yeah, whole lot of down. dumb. Um, has anybody actually been? Is this your first time here at the Comedy Bar? Hi. <laughs> Were you here? You guys have been here then before, yes? Have you seen half naked bitches on stage? Huh? On rings? Oh my god, that's fantastic. I love the energy already. That's what's up. She's like, no, shh, be quiet. Uh. I'm, I'm so did, shocked. Did you get any story. ideas? Any ladies in here get somebody you're like, you know what? I gotta move my fucking name in front of the ceiling. Oh. They're considered illegal in most states, though, so let's oh. move on. All right, TM, I'm too much information. Why don't you tell them the genesis of the show? Like, why, why, uh, why on Tuesday night we feel the need to throw our Arab identity in your faces? <laughs> the soup after dark. Uh, basically, we go to shows all the time, and they're filled with, with all due respect, with white people, which we love. We would not be here without white people. But we, we love working with other people also. And uh, I love seeing variety, burlesque, aerial dancers, magicians, um, Boys. He basically has ADD and he wants you guys to join join him. I have everything at once. I'm half I'm actually half half white, half Palestinian. Are there anybody in here who's mixed? Like half Dominican, half Puerto Rican? Uh what's what are you? Half and half secret? <laughs> and half shut up. <laughs> okay, how did you can I ask you a question? Because people are always like, oh my god, oh, that's so crazy. How did your parents meet? Did like your dad take your mom hostage? <laughs> Which is just shitty. How did your parents, do you know how your parents met? People ask you that? A disco, circa 1970. Yeah. Porter's loved the disco. Oh my god, oh that's fantastic. Not at work, not like he was trying to get a job. He was like, hey gringo, you know, like maybe you can hire me or something. Not like that? Oh. That's the romantic porn I have in my head. Good. Um, what up, you want, you want to say some stuff? Or are you just watching it? I'm, I'm just like really, um, <laughs> I've never been this excited and nervous about a show like this before. Uh, so this is a theme show every month where we want to bring a different theme. And this month's theme is like the funniest topic in the world, the Middle East. Am I right? It's crazy. It's always in the news, guys. It's always in the news. Yeah. It, which is a great time right now to be Middle Eastern. Like uh, between um, the election fiasco and the gorilla getting shot, we're not in the news. This is a good time. Yeah. Actually, we're like, yeah. And Hillary. Yeah, that too. So I'm glad. Like, you know, there's no negative uh, news right now. Is there any other Arabs in here? Keep shooting. Right? <laughs> Yay! Yeah. All right, so maybe let's. Uh, security! Security's right here and right about there. There's a woo and a whole lot of. I'm half. I'm half. So fuck that shit. Let's get rid of these motherfuckers. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, is anybody celebrating anything? You guys, it's Tuesday night, like, oh, let's get crazy. Anybody celebrating anything? Huh? You celebrating graduation? We'll get to that in a second. Oh, nice. Graduation, what are you graduating from? Shut the front door. Holy cow. Listen, I have this, like, rash, like, <laughs> you're going to get that all the time. Oh, my God, you're going to everyone's going to come to you. He's like, hey, listen, like, can you touch my boobs real quick? Because I'm not happy. <laughs> That's what I tell my doctor. Awesome, good. Okay, congratulations. Um, you know what? Why don't we give her a prize? We're gonna give you a gift certificate for City Press. Uh, I, I hope you like juice, cause you're gonna be a doctor. You're gonna need a lot of. Yeah, yeah so you're gonna get. We're gonna give you a gift certificate for City Press, uh, cause it's it's congratulations. That's huge, man. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. That's a lot of debt. Oh shit. I'm like, oh, it's a rash. 
That's it, huh? <laughs> Need to go. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Okay. So we're also celebrating Ramadan, right? Ramadan Kareem. Anybody in here actually Muslim? Cool. Good. <laughs> Fuck them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm Muslim, and every every time Ramadan shows up in the summer, yeah. I'm like, son of a bitch. It's the longest. That's the one thing I have to give up for every Ramadan. Year, is Ramadan family. Comes 11 days earlier, so every time it comes at a different time, and this time it's in the summer, the longest days in North America, so... Yeah. So, like, you guys get, like, during Lent, for instance, how many here are Catholic, give out some of them during Lent? All right! So, Arabic and Catholic, yeah. you have a lot of guilt. <laughs> like, a lot of guilt. You're, you're kind of like an Ar Armenian Jew, you're the best, just this combination. So the thing is, like, if you guys, for, for Lent, if you guys give up something, what I love about the Catholics is they'll come up to me like, oh my god, Mona, I'm just like you, I'm giving up something for Lent. I'm like, okay, yeah, what are you giving up? I'm giving up chocolate and drinking on the weekends, girl. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, your ass made you give that shit up. Don't blame that on Jesus. Don't blame that. Because because Muslims, we have to give up, like, cocaine, water, <laughs> sex. we got to give up everything. All months from sunrise to sunset for 30 days. Like, you know what it's like to go without cocaine? Cocaine? Yo, breakfast? Coke? Yeah. No, I'm just. No, but I always thought, I always thought, like, the, the one religion that, that has it down when it comes up to giving something for, you know, you go fasting basically for religion, the yeah. one religion that's got it down packed, the Jews. Man. Right? How many Jews are in here? Let's be careful. I'm, I'm trying to make it to show this. Shut up! How many Jews are in here? I don't know. I go right to the. Okay, Jews give for for Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, one of those fifty thousand holidays. They give up everything for twenty four hours, and they're like, "Yo, we're done, God, we're good. I gotta get back to work, son." Shit to do. <laughs> you laugh. It's true. Look up. Look somewhere. Find a Jew. There's gotta be somewhere. Man. You guys have a, there's no Jews here. Come on. Do it in the beard, real quick. Just be Jewish for five minutes. Hey, oh. It's all racist. Your rape security. They got racism. We got Arabs. Yeah, we need people in the room. Man. All right, that was good. <laughs> you know, I'm just curious. How many people here have misconceptions about Arabs? Or let me let me rephrase this. Uh, show hands. Who is here is racist towards Arabs and Muslims? <laughs> Great. It's okay to be racist. I always said that. It's okay to be racist. Just know what you're racist about. Don't get your racism confused. Yes. Like, don't confuse Iranians with Arabs or Arabs with Indians. If you want to hate Indians, hate Indians. Just don't confuse them with Arabs. Just be clear on your so hatred. So we got a problem about hating Indians? If you don't like peanut butter, just don't like peanut butter. You know what I'm saying? Like, hate right. Don't hate wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I look racially ambiguous. People come up to me all the time thinking I'm different races. And I had to learn how to say I don't speak English when I saw me in different languages. <laughs> and uh, I hate it. Well, why would you have to say I don't speak English and like Thai? I, I, I never, people never mistake me for a Thai person. What do you have to, you, I don't Thai, know what you call them, Thai? Thai people? Thailandese people? Thailandese? That's Taiwan! <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna jump it, you're gonna hate, hate right. <laughs> That's the point of trying. So. All right, good. We, we we talked about medical school. Um, we've talked about these guys. Anybody else? Anybody celebrating like a divorce? <laughs> some, anybody cheating on somebody? Else? <laughs> anybody talk some shit up? Anybody want to see more um, ring cooch? <laughs> Dude, they were awesome, yo. Like, at some point, I'm like, really? Like, oh. I wanted to play. I, I wanted to play. I'm just saying, like, listen. If it gets crazy later on at night, you see me swinging like George of the Jungle from one to the next. You can pull it off. I gotta like stretch before I sneeze. That's how I stretch. <laughs> um, I don't nice. Know if I can hang there. Oh, that's another one. Anybody from out of town? Yeah. Not from Chicago. Yay! Where are you guys from? Hello. Let's go. San Fran are you guys originally from from San Francisco, or you live there now? From from. Fourth generation or just fourth person in this <laughs> One of each. One of each. I really like San Francisco. I have to say, I don't know if you guys if you know this, but there's a huge Arab community there and they're super progressive. They're like really Muslim and gay. It's the best combination play ever. You should go find it. Um, what brings you in town? Really? You just stopped in Chicago to get like a tetanus shot? 
So let's bring out a white man. Yeah. <laughs> this, is like, this is your variety. A white man in a vest. Hey, is he gay? I don't know. <laughs> you guys laughed way too hard at that. Uh, I, uh, I don't know. Let's get into me. Uh, my name is Sam Norton. Hello, audience. Cool. Uh, I, wasn't, I, I, didn't, I wasn't born and raised in Chicago. Who's born and raised in this city? Round of applause. Fucking two people. Cool! Uh, Alright, anybody from my state? Anybody from Kansas, huh? Oh, now I get it. Ugh. I, got it. I mean, that's the right reaction. That was just a weird reaction. Yeah, I'm from Wichita, Kansas, so and I'm also from a big Irish American family. If you guys are trying to put it together, that just means white trash. That's what I am. I am 100% white trash, it's pretty cool. Uh, it took me a while to figure out I was white trash. I didn't know it growing up, I didn't know I was poor until I had money in my adult life. That was a weird day, right? Because I look back at my childhood and I'm like, yeah, rich people didn't grow up like me. That's very apparent now that I realized it. Rich people don't look back on their childhood and think to themselves, you know what my favorite toy growing up was? Fire. That's not what rich people think, right? Rich people don't watch their brother shit into a milk jug, then throw it onto the interstate like a hand grenade. That's not... Yeah, that actually happened. Still the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life, right? So yeah, I am white trash American. I am married. I'm in, I'm in an interracial marriage, so nobody gives a fuck about that. Cool. All right. You guys are like, yep, don't approve. Got it. I am in an interracial marriage. I am white trash American. My wife is Chinese Canadian. Canadian, thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> By that tepid response, I get the sense that you guys are all real disappointed to find out she's not black. I kind of got that right away. <laughs> you guys are like, what the fuck? You lied to us, man. You said interracial. That's not, she's not black. It's not interracial. You're Caucasian, she's Asian. That both has Asian in it. You're fucking lying. Still interracial, but if I can be honest with you guys, she's not here, so I'll be 100% honest. I really wish she was black. I really do. Yeah. Because it's way better, okay? I've dated black women in the past. When you're a white guy dating a black woman, way better than being a white guy with a Chinese woman, all right? And I'm not saying that any woman is better than my wife. None of you are. That's why I married her, okay? But what I am saying is it's way better when that woman happens to be black, right? Because in the past, been with my black girlfriends walking down the street. It's awesome because everybody gives you so much goddamn respect. It's amazing, right? Just walking down the street, everybody looks at me like, hey, look at you, white boy, way to go, yeah! You're so progressive, and he probably has a huge dick. Like, it's awesome, just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't happen with my Chinese wife on my arm. Everybody looks at me like I'm a goddamn creep, like, ah, I don't like it, she looks too young. 
happened? No! Well, what happened? Looks like he went to the deepest recesses of the internet and perched us a petite woman to make his tiny dick look bigger. I don't like it! <laughs> I just love her. That's all, man. I'm just in love with my wife. All right, don't get gay about it. <laughs> I love her. She's, uh, she's great. Uh, his family's a little off, though. It's weird. I, is, has anybody ever been in an interracial relationship in here? I knew there was one couple. One, two, three? All right, very impressive, guys. Let's get on this. Let's make some more presidents, all right? <laughs> when you're in an interracial relationship, culture kind of comes into, uh, comes into play. There's a bunch of weird cultural shit that happened with me. Like the first time I met my, uh, my in-law, right? I met him separately because I came into town separately. First time I met my mother-in-law, which is fucking awkward, right? But she comes into town, and I was like, oh, hey, let's have a home-cooked meal. So me and her, we went out and got groceries, started making a home-cooked meal together, right? Just pretty intimate. Me and her in the kitchen, I'm doing all the prep work, and I start getting comfortable around her, right? And here's the thing. My in-laws are Chinese, okay? Full-blown, speak Chinese, from China Chinese, okay? And they speak as much English as I do Chinese, which is muy poquito, okay? <laughs> so we're sitting there, and I feel, I'm feeling fancy, and like, hey, I'm feeling good, all right? So I just start getting silly with it. I'm like, you say tomato, and I say tomato. You say tomato. You guys know that song, right? Well, I find out real quick that the word tomato in Mandarin Chinese literally translates to motherfucker. Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just sitting there like, you say tomato, and I say motherfucker, right, Mom? Let's do this. It's fucking awkward. But that's not even, uh, it doesn't even hold a candle to the first time I met my father-in-law. He came in separately like a month later, right? And he comes in, and he's like, oh, where do you want to go to eat? And I'm like, not fucking here. Let's go out. Let's get away from tomato, all right? So we go, we take the train, and uh, if you guys aren't from Chicago, it doesn't matter. I live up on the north side, and I wanted to take him down to Chinatown on the south side, because I know what's up, no Panda Express for him, you know? I know where the good stuff is. <laughs> so we ride the red line all the way down to Chinatown. And here's the thing, Chicago's very segregated. It's just a city that's the part that we gotta deal with, right? So this is a scenario that we find ourselves in. Right? I'm sitting on the train, it's me, my wife, and my father-in-law, and then like 35 black people going home from work, right? Which is not that big of a deal until my wife and my father-in-law start arguing at the top of their lungs in Mandarin Chinese. They are fucking screaming at each other, right? And through context, I get that my father-in-law is screaming something like, I don't want to get off on this stop, because uh, if we get off on this stop, uh, I don't want to have to be walking back and forth, right? Now, I know he was saying uh a lot, because where in English we say uh, in Mandarin Chinese, they say the word nay ga. <laughs> yeah, see how tight your buttholes got? Holy shit, it's right. That's what I was in, right? Have a little compassion for me having to deal with the fucking situation, right? Just watching my father-in-law scream at the top of his lungs in the fucking city, just going, bo ya no nega nega, just vaguely pointing to everybody on the fucking train making it look like I trained a 50-year-old Chinese man to call everyone the N-word. I'm like, I, don't, I just fucking met this guy. I don't fuck, kill him. I don't care. I just want dim sum. <laughs> Shit's always on me. Like, fuck that guy. I don't like him. <laughs> Dickhead. I wish that word was talked about more other than what we always hear, right? I know it's weird for a white guy to talk about the N-word, but that's our problem. It's nobody else's, right? Black folks, I'm just viewing here. Like, that, that word's not your problem. That's, you know how to use it, right? White people, <laughs> white people in here, answer this question. When's the only time we can say the N-word? Never. Never. Good job. <laughs> if you said something different, you're fucking racist. That's, <laughs> but Sam, nope. Just don't ever say it. That's the, that's the thing. But. Here's the thing that needs to be talked about that I wish I had people tell me, like, how the fuck are we supposed to react to that word? Like, nobody, 
ever tells us. Also, black people, I feel like you have some responsibility too. Like between two black people, that word doesn't mean anything. It's just like a hug and a handshake. Like, what's up? That's cool. But between a white, white person and a black person, that's a very important time in that relationship, right? That's so beautiful. That's a beautiful moment, right? And, and the black people, if you don't know what to get your white friends for Christmas, just say that to us. That'll make our fucking year. Like, ah, look, I got the letter jacket. Take me to prom. Cool. <laughs> But nobody ever tells white people how to react to that situation. Here's the best example I have. A couple of years ago, I'm hanging out with my friend Dave. He's black, right? We're sitting around, we're writing, doing some comedy shit. And in the middle of it, he's like, you know what? I'm going to a party, you wanna come to a barbecue with me? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I wanna go, let's do that. That's nice, right? So we show up. Now, the first problem, apropos of nothing, the first problem is, he didn't tell me what type of barbecue it was. I thought it was just a get-together. Turns out, it was a reunion party for his all-black fraternity, okay? So I clearly don't belong there, you know what I mean? I'm just like, hey, I'm someone's Uber driver. How's it going, guys? Like, it was fucking awkward. And he didn't introduce me to anybody. He just went and fucked off and got drunk because they had free liquor, and I'm just standing there like, all right, time to be charming. And I was. I got a vest on. I'm a charming motherfucker, right? So I make friends with his friends, and I'm standing in a circle as fat bros, and I guess I made everybody laugh, and Dave saw how fucking not racist I was. I don't know what the fuck happened, but all I know is that he came up, and he was super proud that his friend wasn't racist, and he decided to fucking celebrate by grabbing the back of my neck, shaking me back and forth, <laughs> leaning back and just saying, Sam, you might, and that's when he called me the N-word for the very first time. Go fuck yourself, Dave. That is not okay because nobody tells white people how to respond to that word. I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do in that situation. What, I know what I'm not supposed to do, which is say that back to him. I know I'm not supposed to be like, hey, you're mine too. I know that, but I don't know what the fuck else am I? I love you. I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to say. So I'm just sitting there while everybody, and all of his friends are looking at me as if Dave came up to me, pulled out a pistol, and fired a loaded gun, then handed me the loaded gun, and I was just like, this isn't mine. I don't want anything to do with that. I'm gonna dance in the corner. And it fucking ruined the party because everybody was looking at me like, what are you gonna do, white boy? Are you gonna say it? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to. Even the DJ, I may be paranoid, but I'm pretty sure the DJ was even in on it, right? Because he started after that point, started playing songs from the 90s that he knew I liked, but that he knew what the N word was in it just to see if I'd sing it, you know what I mean? So I'm sitting there dancing, like, oh yeah, turn it up, I love Tupac. How do you want it? Mm. How does it feel? Growing up as a nope, not gonna say it, yeah! <laughs> Stepping over these fucking landmines. <laughs> yeah, just learn how to say it, black folks. White people don't ever say it. That's all it is. I don't know, I get, I get in those weird situations. I, I'm wrong. I, I'm, I'm telling you guys this like I got it all figured out. I know, I'm fucking wrong all the time. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm 29 years old. I realized on my 29th birthday, oh shit, I don't know shit, all right? I know a lot of you are thrown back by that, but like, oh my god, did a straight white man just admit he was wrong? I never thought I'd see the day! <laughs> and then some of you are like, I still don't believe you're straight. I got it, cool. Um, <laughs> but I'm wrong all the time, I say shit, I get into weird situations. Another time, two weeks ago, I had a, uh, at a meeting downtown. I like to go catch the train. Here's what happened, right? I'm going through the turnstile. I hear the train coming, so I'm like, fuck, I gotta go run and catch it. So I start running up the stairs, and I see ahead of me, the person ahead of me dropped their wallet, right? So I'm like, fuck, now I gotta do this good thing. Hopefully I have time. So I run up, I grab their wallet, and I run up to them, sprint up to them, I'm out of breath. I'm like, sir, sir, excuse me, sir. You dropped your wallet. Excuse me, sir, here you go, you dropped your wallet. Right, and they turned around to me, and they looked me dead in the eye and said, Sir, I'm a woman. And I was like, ah, God damn it, no! Son of a bitch! Because I don't have the time or the complexities to get into this social situation right now. I don't, because you guys can guess, she was a transgender woman, and I made the wrong call. I fucking flipped the corner and went, fuck, I'm the enemy. Cool, I didn't mean to. Shit. 
So I felt bad right away. I, I knew I was wrong, and I tried to do my best to remedy the situation. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I just started apologizing. I'm like, I am so fucking sorry, man. I just saw that you dropped your wallet. I wanted to make sure you got home safe. Please accept my apology, man. right? And then luckily, she looked at me, and then she said, ma'am, do I look fucking 50 to you? And I was like, all right, fuck me. I don't know what to do right now. This is the most hot. In one sentence, I managed to go from transphobic to sexist to ageist. Like, I didn't know what to fucking do. So I just, like, hopped on the train and ran away, because that's all I know. But here's the thing, right? I know I was wrong, right? We can all admit I was the bad guy for the first time. But the second time, she was kind of being a, a real turd. You know what I mean? She was a real turd, all right? She had every reason to get mad at me the first time when I called her a man. I got it, all right? But when I, when I changed genders, you know, and I apologized, at that point, you've got to recognize I'm not, I'm not a dickhead. I'm just an idiot. That's, that's what was going on. I'm just an idiot who's trying to be nice, right? And in that situation, I think that we are both wrong. I would say that both of us were assholes. And I say asshole because it's a gender-neutral insult. That's why, right? Because what the fuck did she think was going on? Did she think she was part of some good Samaritan hate crime? Like, that doesn't fucking exist. Nobody's going around like, hey, dude, yeah, the chick with the dick, what's up? Uh, just saw you drop your wallet, wanted to make sure you got it, wanted to make sure nobody stole your identity, because clearly you're still looking for yours. All right, I'll see you later. Yeah, I didn't say that. Fuck that person. I did the right thing. It's my favorite joke, because everybody doesn't know how to feel about it. Like, oh, fuck, wait, you didn't, you just, all right, cool. That was awesome. I'm a great comic. Try to get into these a little bit better. <laughs> oh, now you give me the light after I chastise your audience? That's cool. <laughs> get into these a little bit more, buttholes. All right, I'll see you later. All right, I'm going to get out of here with one more. I, uh, so like I said, I say a lot of weird shit, uh, and it... It, does, it doesn't just go towards you guys, it goes to my loved ones too. Um, and I figured out my problem. We, we all need a little bit of perspective in our lives, right? In my perspective, I know my problem. The, why things fly out of my face is because I have a bad editing process, right? I'm a corporation, and I have two shitty employees that work underneath me. One is my heart, who's a hippie running a drum circle in my chest, right? He has all the emotions that we want to say, and he sends them on up to my brain. And my brain is a stressed out dude working in his cubicle, smoking Newports in front of a typewriter, trying to get out as many mouth memos as possible, all right? This happened three months ago, sitting on the couch with my wife, right? And I saw, well, immediately, I saw a uh, commercial, a Swiffer commercial, came on the television. And my heart started up, right? My heart's like, look at this fucking Swiffer commercial. Just said nine out of 10 people choose Swiffer over mops? Are you fucking kidding me? Because in this commercial, they conveniently only showed women. Oh, okay. So we're gonna say people, but we're only gonna show women? All right, you sexist, chauvinistic piece of shit, all right? If you're gonna say people, why don't you represent all demographics, because this is 2016, not 1953, you piece of shit commercial. Let's start a feminist revival in this bitch. Say that to our wife, send that up there. All right, what do we got? Uh, women, mops, people. All right, we got it. Tick 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 Women aren't people. Fucking no! That's not what I wanted to say. Even my dick was like, we're trying to get laid down here, shit for brains. What the fuck are you guys doing? All right, guys, my name is Sam Norton. Enjoy the rest of the show. Good night. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Sam Norton, or the Comedy Mirrors, check out his podcast, Dissecting the Frog, VTF, he breaks down comedy, really great uh, podcast. All right, before we get the show going, uh, we had you guys fill out some raffle tickets, we're going to do our first lucky winner draw, and can I get a drum roll to begin?
very much. Would you like to see a rabbit appear? Do you see any rabbits in this hat? Do you see any rabbits under the hat? Next to the hat? Behind the hat? Are there any rabbits in this hat? Good, I don't have to do that fucking trick. I hate that trick. So does the rabbits. I'll be honest, I have only a few minutes here this evening, so I can't do my whole show for you, sad to say. But uh, the other reason is I hurt myself recently. I know. Uh, I was drunk, I'll admit it. And uh, I tripped and I fell, and uh, damn. you probably don't know so much about magic, but it requires a great deal of secret hand movements called sleight of hand. Anyway, when I hurt myself, when I tripped, I fell, I hurt my wrist. I don't know if you can hear this or not. It's okay when I go like this, but there's this little clicking sound. When I go like this, listen. Oh, yeah. That isn't right, is it? No. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. I'm not a doctor. Doctor? I'm not a doctor, but I think that's a bad case of plastic cup under the arm, don't you? magician and fool your senses. That's how I fooled your sense of hearing. That is very difficult to do. Now I'd like to fool your sense of smell. Sir, pull my finger. No, I'm not doing that. Instead, I'd like to try a little bit of psychic magic, a little bit of psychic mystery. I'm not only a magician, I'm a psychic as well. In fact, I'm a psychic and a mentalist. Hey, I'm a psychalist. In my pocket here, I have a deck of cards, and I would like to have a card selected, but in a rather unusual way. Uh, let's see, I'd like to have several people involved. You folks first. We have red cards, we have black cards. Should it be a red card or a black card? It's up to you. Red it is. All right, good. You sure you want red? You don't want to change your mind? Even though it'll be helpful to me? Red it is. Okay, good. Then uh, let me see. How about this table right here? Red, we have hearts or diamonds. Should it be a heart or a diamond? Heart. Heart it is. Are you sure you want hearts? Yeah. It's your free choice. I didn't wait at you when I said heart. You want a heart. Is that correct? Yeah. Very good. Then we have, uh, let's see, right over here. We have odd cards and even cards. Should it be an odd card or an even card? Even, even it is, are you sure? Uh, no. Not sure. You want to change it to odd? No, I'll go with even. You're going to go with even. All right, then. We need an even number between 1 and 13. How about this table right here? 12. 12 it is. So that gives us two, leads us to a queen of diamonds. Queen of, what was it? Hearts. Who said hearts? Hearts it was. Queen of hearts. Is that correct? Because any one of you could have changed your mind, you could have come up with a completely different card. This is very strange. Because about five minutes ago, I turned over a card in this deck backstage. I don't know what card it was because I did it behind my back. You take a look here. No, I'm very limber. It's yoga. Wait a second. I can't believe it. There is one card upside down. Hey, wouldn't that be weird if it were the Queen of Hearts? That would be weird, wouldn't it? All right, then should we check? We may as well. Hold on a second. Where'd it go? It was here somewhere. I see it. I can't believe it though. But I see it. It's the Queen of Hearts. Oh my god! I know, isn't that crazy? Oh my god! That's crazy shit. Oh man. Okay, I gotta tell you the truth. We set that trick up. I talked to all these folks before the show and we set it up. I promise I give each 20 bucks cash. How much did I say? 20 or 50? 50 bucks, all right, good, no problem. 50, 200, 200 bucks, that's all right. I've got the cash right here, I don't mind. Oh shit, not again. Can I get a water, please, a liquid of some kind? Beer would be okay? Uh, oh shit. Oh, great. Can I catch you next week? I'll, uh, here, put it on my credit card. 200 bucks, that'll be fine. That's, uh, hey, that's not my card. Wait, I don't think this is my wallet. Oh, Mona said I'd be stealing wallets, you're right. I found somebody's wallet here. Uh, Mr. Diablo, first initial is L. L Diablo, are you here? <laughs> Not here. All right, well, if you see him, tell him I found his wallet, okay? All right. Shit, that's hot. All right, well, let's do some magic. What do you say? Yes, 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 Oh, by the way, we found an iPhone before the show. Didn't we lose our iPhone? Could be somebody here. It's a good-looking phone. Six and a half. He just came out the other day. I know. Check out those apps. Those are good. Those are nice apps. We have Haley Paul. Excuse me. Hello. 
Yes? It's not funny? Okay, thank you. <laughs> You guys want to have some real fun? Try this next time you're on an airplane. You wait till the person next to you, oh, San Francisco, you like this. You wait till the person next to you falls asleep, okay? And then you do this. Hey, man, wake up! Wake up! <laughs> That's fucking funny. We love that. On the planes. Okay, listen, I don't want to find out. I'm only had a few minutes up here today, so I want to find somebody out of the audience. Uh, oh, geez. Didn't know I had this in here. This is actually why I quit drinking. I realized I had this with me. I, uh, the real reason I quit drinking is because, uh, thanks for all the offers for drinks before the show. I appreciate that. Uh, but anyway, I, uh, I woke up one day, I found this in my bed. And that's, uh, uh, oh yeah. That's, uh, oh yeah. Oh man, that's, that's wrong. That's, all right, look at it. Victoria should have kept that secret. Listen, I'm gonna pick out somebody from the audience if you don't mind. Uh, I don't wanna pick out anybody face to face. Everybody else will think we set something up. So I'm gonna turn around and throw an object over my shoulder. If you catch it or if it lands near you, if you wouldn't mind coming around the corner here and coming up the stairs and helping me out, okay? Now to make it fair, I'll keep my eyes closed, okay? I have no idea where this is gonna go. You ready? Here we go. One, two, what's the matter? No, they're closed. What? Ah! Not a good idea. All right, good. Let me see, somebody over here on the side. Are you busy by any chance? Would you mind joining me up here on stage? Come around on the side here and uh, go right over there. That's good. Take the steps. Very good. Here she comes. Oh. Ah, thanks so much for coming out today. What's your name? Catherine. Catherine, we haven't met before, have we? No, we haven't. Don't be so happy about it, do you? Jesus Christ. <laughs> First thing is, you get a prize just for coming here on stage. Aren't you excited? It is your very own cocktail napkin. <laughs> nice, isn't it? <laughs> Wrinkled, but not otherwise used. Check this out. Uh huh. If you fold this over like so, and believe it or not, when I wrap this up, watch what happens. Uh huh. When you step outside, Catherine, if you do this, if you step outside, you hold up your hand and get a taxi. Isn't that cool? That's <laughs> not it. That's not what it's for. Wait a second. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. From a wrinkly but otherwise unused napkin? I can't believe this. What? See, all those years of twisting small squares of paper finally paid off. Yeah. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? A little flower for you for coming up here on stage today. Uh huh. Here's the best part. You ready? Oh, it smells just like a napkin. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> now, Catherine, if you wouldn't mind. Sure it's okay? Regular old nail, you get it in the hardware store, right? All right, good. Uh, let's see, and a block of wood. May I? Thank you. Goes right through here like this. All right, now, Catherine, I have here four styrofoam cups. Would you come over here, please? Sure. Uh -huh. Here's the deal. I'm going to go way over there in the corner, and I want you to take one of these cups and cover up that nail, all right? And then I want you to take the other cups and set them up around it, all right? Uh, then I want you to mix up the, cu mix up the cups so that perhaps even you yourself do not know where that nail is. All right? <laughs> Sounds good. There you are. The more cord when I was born. All right, good, I'm okay. <laughs> Wait, well, I'm sorry, I'm just getting that. Okay, good. Ooh, the floating magic wand. Here. Uh -huh. I hope so. 
All right, good. Let me know when you're done, Catherine. Don't make a career out of it, just uh, mix them up a little bit. <laughs> All set? All right, very good. Now, if you would be so kind, <clears throat> one of these cups, could you do me a favor? Come on over here. Just separate them out a little bit, if you would. find out exactly where that nail is. Hmm. You didn't take it out and put it in your pocket, did you? All right, just making sure. Could you come here just for a second, please? I want to get the psychic vibration from Catherine. Can I borrow your hand, please? This, this one right here. No, no, just hold it over the top. That's all. It's like this. Step a little bit closer. To me. Thank you. Just separate the cups out a little bit, if you would, please. All right, perfect. Give Catherine a big round of applause as she returns to her seat. Thank you very much. Don't just step around the back there. We're not insured. All right, then. That's the end of my show. You've been a great audience. Thanks very much. Bye bye. Oh, or 
if, if we didn't have a dance off, like when we marked our turf based off our dance moves, we all knew karate. All of us in the 80s knew karate, right? In case the Russians were coming. That's true, right, San Francisco? The Russians could always come. And if you know Putin right now is being a bit of a dick, I'm just saying you should learn some of your karate. Or everybody who always had skateboards. They did. They had skateboards. All right, are you guys ready for some more stand-up? Dude, fuck that noise. Are you ready for some fucking stand-up, guys? You guys came out to a fucking comedy show and paid for it. Ladies and gentlemen, this next comic, he's from Houston. He is all over the comedy scene, I'm telling you. He's on Comcast Sports. He's got a show coming out June 24th at Joe's on Wee Street called These Jokers Ain't Funny, but I do, I swear to God, oh, these jokers are wild. All right, he's also a potential comedy legend after me. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your next comic, Mickey Housley. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. They ain't give you no cheesecake, man. They just, you just watching them eat. That's horrible. <laughs> he hungry as hell. <sighs> He's trying to pretend like he's not hungry. Oh, what are you looking at? Nothing, nothing. Oh, so, man, you are, you are so selfish. You could, you cute, you cute though. You can be selfish when you're cute. That's, those are the rules. <laughs> That's what's up, man. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing good? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, cool, cool, cool. Where your day go? He left? She said, I don't know, I don't. Okay, she said, he ain't getting none of my food either. Okay, that's what's up. <laughs> Y'all just didn't order nothing, right? You gotta get your dude with money. That ain't cool, we ain't get you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. What you, oh man, this is horrible, man. Y'all, hey, can y'all? Nobody got food. Can you get them something to eat on my tab? Yeah, I mean on their tab. My bad. I said that. Name. This is awesome, man. I, a little bit about me. My name is Mickey. I've been doing comedy for a few years. Um, I haven't been on, you know, national TV, and I don't have two and three hours worth of material. I've never been even been outside the U.S. doing stand up. I say all that to say this. Lower your expectations, okay? <laughs> Some of y'all looking like, oh, he black, he funny. No, okay? <laughs> I just came to get out the house. That's all. <laughs> came to see how miserable everyone else was. How y'all doing? Y'all doing good? Okay, cool. That's what's up. Black power. Keep, keep hope alive. They were saying the N-word earlier. That was Sam doing that. He, he was trying to be slick about it. That's cool. I seen what, how y'all was looking at him. Be nice. <laughs> She was like, ooh, he said nigger. He almost, okay, anyways. <laughs> That's cool. I got a lot of jokes, man. I'm not gonna do all of them because I, I, I got hurt earlier, so I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> that was good when he said that. That's, that's like, you about to have sex, girl. I would hit you with all the moves, but I got hurt playing basketball. My, my ankle's sore. I can't, can't dip up in it like I want to. Y'all are nasty. <laughs> That's what's up, man. I've never been on a stage with earrings. This is beautiful. I like this. <laughs> what the hell is this here for? This <laughs> earrings and kumbaya candles. I like this. Okay, I'm having a good time. Cool, man. That's what's up, man. I look like I belong here. Yo, <laughs> That's what's up. That's when they don't consult with you on what picture they're going to use. So we're going to use this one. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Nobody consulted with me. You know? I, was, I, just, I just sent my email that we got one. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> That's what's up, man. You still ain't get no brownie. That's horrible. Man. All right, I guess I'll do a joke or two. Uh, I want to do a lot, man. So I, I, I just celebrated. <laughs> yeah, I just celebrated my year anniversary being married, right? And uh, yeah, cool. cool, cool man. Anybody? Y'all, y'all married? G? Okay, cool. Man. He was waiting on that. <laughs> said, nah, we cheat. That's what's up. That's why she don't get no food. Nope. <laughs> you get dick. <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's how you cheat. <laughs> she already know her role. Don't come here asking for no food. <laughs> you get jokes and magic tricks. <laughs> you want food, get the dude in the dress. That was up here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she looking at your brownie too. Oh, it's horrible. Uh, so yeah, my wife. 
thought that it would be cool to take a trip around the city of Chicago on a plane. I thought that was stupid, right? That's stupid. If you want to go on a plane, go to Jamaica. You don't go on a plane in Chicago and go to Chicago. That's the dumbest thing in the world, right? But she thought it was cool. And the pilot, he wasn't doing things a pilot typically does, like fly the plane, like, right? He kept, trying, he kept trying to take pictures of us, say cheese. I'm like, no, keep your eye on the sky. Like, I don't like this, right? He kept trying to fly through that tall building with the two white cones on the top of it. I'm like, what are you doing? He says, I'm kicking a field goal. I'm like, you ain't Robbie Gold, don't do that, right? <laughs> it was horrible, man. It felt like we was on Spirit Airlines, right? Because this, this plane this plane was little. This was the littlest plane I've ever been on. This, this was a smart plane, if you will, right? And I'm nervous because I had never flown on a drone before. This is a new experience for me, right? But it felt like Spirit Airlines because, you know, Spirit, like, you, you, when you're on a plane, you're used to a little bit of turbulence, but Spirit, it feels like it's turbulence the whole way through, like start to finish, right? And every time I feel turbulence, I get nervous. I gotta look out the window and see what's causing the turbulence, right? And we're on this plane, it's shaking real bad. I look out the window and we haven't even left the ground yet. I'm like, this dude's hitting potholes. We need to get off this plane. <laughs> I couldn't wait till he landed the plane, right? He finally lands the plane, I find out he was actually an Uber pilot. I'm like, how do you pull, how do you pull that off? <laughs> how does that even work? <laughs> It was like, I just hang around the airport until I find work. It'll be 1577. I'm like, we get pool, you owe us $10, sir. So. It's scary, man. I actually took an Uber on the way up here, and that was scarier than the plane ride, because, yeah, the driver almost ran over a couple, right? Yeah, it was hard. We almost ran over a couple. It wasn't really his fault, because it was short. He couldn't really see them. They were short. Yeah, they were short. I hate to say the word, because it's offensive. You know, the really short people begins with an M. Mexicans. He almost ran over a whole Mexican family. It was horrible. <laughs> they had the kids with him. The youngest was <laughs> driving a little toy lawnmower. I'm like, this. They started him off early. That's good. <laughs> the other one had a tricycle with an ice cream stand in the front. I'm like, get your ice cream. I don't know if that's racist or not, but the whole time I'm thinking, like, that's a lot of pico de gallo we're going to have to sweep up if he would have hit them. That's all. <laughs> It's horrible, man. But I love Latino women. I love Latino women. Any Latinos in here? Lo siento? Yeah. Okay. I said Latino woman. He's like, hey. <laughs> Maestro. I, I, um, yeah, man, I love Latino women. Yeah, they got the, they got the most, y'all got the most beautiful woman, man, Latino woman. Let me ask you this. Any uh, Latino or Caucasian woman or Asian woman, do y'all like your hair pulled in bed? Yeah, we get grown, we get sexy. Do y'all like y'all like your hair pulled in bed? Anybody? No? What about you cheaters? Do y'all like uh does she does she like <laughs> does she like her hair pulled in bed? He's like, we ain't got that far yet. We ain't got that far. <laughs> I always want to know if white woman and Latino woman like that. What about black man? Dude? You are black, right? Okay, Lena then a Kravitz type of way. That's what's up. Does she like <laughs> American woman? <laughs> <laughs> Does she like her hair pulled? He, <laughs> okay, you ain't introduced her to that side of your world yet? Okay. <laughs> you trying to be nice, yo. We'll keep it correct. <laughs> he ain't got black on her yet. You ready, bitch? He ain't, he ain't did that yet. <laughs> I'm not calling you that. I'm just <laughs> role playing. Anyways. Because I'm married to a black woman. You can't pull the black girl's hair, right? Because they'll let you know. Like, you can try, but it'll be ugly. They'll, they'll let you know. Like, hey, don't, don't pull my hair, okay? Every time I pull my girl hair, I got to apologize. But look, baby, I ain't need to do that. I'm sorry, okay? I'll be gentle next time. <laughs> Is this your scrunchie? Here, take your scrunchie. I'm sorry. I got a glue stick if you need it. <laughs> I love white woman too, man. I just thought we had a new nickname for white woman. Did y'all know? Did you know that? We got a nickname for you didn't know? Yeah, man. I was I was inviting my friend to the show tonight. I said, hey, uh, Tyrone, you should come. <laughs> I said, I'm doing a show at the comedy bar. You should come, man. There's gonna be people, you know. He said, nah, man, I'm chilling, man. I'm gonna call him my Becky and it's gonna go down. I was like, you're Becky? He said, yeah, so we're calling the white girls now. Like, I didn't know that. I didn't know, like, I thought we were still saying snow bunnies. I didn't know we had evolved, right? And now I'm wondering, like, okay, we got a new nickname for white girls. Do white men have a nickname for black girls? I don't know. Ask your coworkers tomorrow, man. 
For real. Be like, hey, Tom, do you like black girls? And Tom's gonna be like, oh, do I? I've been known to keep a Keisha in my back pocket. Like, what the? That's horrible, Tom. Speaking of slavery, I found out that. <laughs> Speaking of slavery, I found out that they're about to put <laughs> they're about to put Harriet Tubman on a new twenty dollar bill. Did y'all hear about that? They're about to put Harriet. Yeah, they're about to put Harriet Tubman on a twenty dollar bill. Why your girl didn't clap? They're about to put Harriet Tubman. <laughs> yeah, check her, man. Check her, okay? <laughs> and that, that's gonna be horrible. I, I'm nervous about that because you're not gonna be able to do everything with the Harriet Tubman money, right? Don't think you can just use her money for everything. There's gonna be restrictions on the Harriet Tubman money, right? Like, you can only use her money to buy train tickets or um, you gotta pay people under the table. Like, here, take this. <laughs> Don't you tell nobody I gave it to you. Or I kill it myself. Down by the riverside. It's gonna be horrible, man. But that's gonna be the easiest money in the world to counterfeit. Because if you're black, you can just put a picture of your brown on the money. Like, here, let me get Big Mama on pump number two. Yeah, now, pump number two. <laughs> like, Is this ain't your Michael? We don't take pancake money. We don't take that. And I'm not gonna like the picture that they're gonna use for Harriet Tubman on the money, right? Because she, you know, she's not gonna look proud like the president, right? She, they're not gonna have her looking proud. Like, they're gonna have her on her money looking real suspicious. She's gonna be on the money like. <laughs> like, that's the how the hand gonna be waving. This is a hologram. <laughs> Glad I got married, man. I was doing that online dating. Anybody do online dating? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's not the way to go, man. It's horrible. Man. Hate online dating. Too many viruses for one, right? Too many viruses. And I met this girl, like, we weren't compatible, right? Because she, she wasn't a match for me. Like, she was really pretty, but she was really dumb, and that don't make sense to me, right? That's a foxy moron. It don't make sense, right? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and she, you know, she was really cool, but I'm looking for someone to talk to, someone to communicate with, someone to socialize with. But this girl was on a whole nother level. All she wanted to do was drink, party, smoke weed, twerk, turn up. I had to tell her, I'm like, look, there is no way we met on ChristianMingo.com, okay? You are filled with the wrong spirits. Because I served Jesus. This girl was serving St. Jameson. I'm like, it's never going to work. <laughs> God, I got married. Because I was living with love in the wrong places. Right? Like, I like easy girls. Like, any easy girls in here by wrong girls? You can always catch one. <laughs> No, he's, okay, that's cool, man. I like easy girls. I like the ones that you say, hey, they say, hey. Like, them the ones I like. But you can't find them now, because girls, y'all got this new term for us dudes. Y'all call us thirsty. We pursue y'all. The ill back, back. You hella thirsty, you know? And I'm a married man. I'm not thirsty, okay? I'm a little parched, but I'm not thirsty, okay? I got a cup at home, okay? <laughs> You can't find easy girls in 2016, you know? All the girls now got standards. Like, no, thirsty dude, I got standards. You want an easy girl now, you gotta buy two bottles of water and go to Flint, Michigan, and you can get with any girl you want. Like, that's the rule now. <laughs> I got family in Flint. Every time I'm at their parties, I'm, I'm there with water bottles. Hey, who's thirsty now? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Forget popping bottles, I'm twisting bottles. Like, hey, beautiful, do I look sexy? No? Okay, I don't like your attitude, I'm out of here. <laughs> Listen up. <laughs> Let me ask y'all this. Any, is anyone married here tonight? Okay, y'all are. Okay, y'all. Y'all are the uh she, she looking at other people. Y'all ain't married? You the only ones? Okay. They they don't they didn't want nobody to know. You just blew their cover. Fuck. <laughs> we wanted to cheat too. Damn. <laughs> is it true when you get married like you gain weight? Is that true? No, she looked at him, well, you gained a lot. Yeah. I've been trying to gain weight, man, because I was like, I, I, be, I see a lot of y'all looking at me in the microphone stand, like, which one's telling the jokes? It's me, focus, okay? I've been, I've been trying to gain weight, right? Like, <laughs> when you my size, there's certain clothes you can't wear, like muscle shirts, because you got to have muscles to wear muscle shirts. And two, I get tired of pulling up the sleeve, like it's a bra strap, like this right here. Oh. This old lady tried to help me. Let me tighten that up for you in the back. I'm like, hey, but it's a wife beater. It's not a bra, okay? 
Some dude tried to hook him. I'm like, I don't swing that way. Don't do that. <laughs> Tired of being skinny. Believe it or not, I used to be a fat baby. I was born 10 pounds, 3 ounces, right? Yeah, yeah. I was so fat, the doctors had to give my mama an O section because the seat wasn't big enough. They cut a whole circle in my mom's stomach. And I had to kick out. <laughs> And the doctors pulled me out from underneath my armpits like I was a Chilean miner. I had a hard hat on with a dim flashlight in the front. It's like I was down there nine months, thank you. <laughs> then I had questions. I was like, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are y'all telling me that another man was drunk and I got put in the hole? How the hell did that happen? What do you mean he left? He needs to take care of me. I got a daddy, shut up. <laughs> I got a mama too, man. My mom, man, she used to beat the hell out of us too, man. Anybody, is in, did you, anybody grow up getting whooped? Just, okay. Okay, cool. Like, she raised her hand. Hi, yes. Yeah, man. And you know, black mothers got this phrase that they used to intimidate their children. It's called, I will beat the black off you, right? Like for us, we scared. For him, not so much. Like he didn't care, right? I said, okay, like, that's two hits and he done, right? My brother looked like him. <laughs> Bro, like, my mom, she would literally, like, beat the black off me, man. She would beat the black. And I'm not just talking about the skin color. I'm, like, the accent and everything, right? I try to be cool, like, hey, mama, chill out, man. Don't do that, mama. Why, my mother, why has thou struck at me? <laughs> you ever had the mama speech beat out of you? I'm like, it's horrible, man. She even went, pow, my hair unnapped. I'm like, this is horrible. I ain't had no more rhythm. <laughs> I'm never gonna dance again. <laughs> <laughs> I, used to get I used to get teased for being black, right? So sometimes I would like those whoopings because I would get teased for being too dark. And my light skinned friends <laughs> would like to remind me how dark I was, right? They were like, hey, Mickey, you is black. I'm like, yeah, I know I'm black. No, nah, I don't think you know how black you are. You are black. It's 17 A's and you're black. I'm like, wow. He's like, yeah, if you had a baby with a white girl, the kid would be great. That's how black you are. <laughs> Close your eyes real quick. I was like, like this? He was like, yeah, you're two shades blacker than that. <laughs> There's somebody in the back right now with the eyes closed. Like, yep, that is pretty black. He got you, he got you, right? And a lot of people thought I was African, right? You know, like I am theoretically, but not recently, you know? <laughs> Believe it or not, it was, it was the Africans that thought I was African. They had the hardest time, I had the hardest time convincing Africans that I wasn't African, right? Because I was one, my best friend when I first met him, he comes up to me, I mind my own business, he comes up to me, big smile on his face. <laughs> Excuse me, my friend. Where are you from? Like, I'm from Houston, Texas. Oh, no, 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 no. Where are you really from? I'm like, really, I'm from Houston, Texas. You're from Zamunda. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 I know what you're thinking. I'm not African. Okay, maybe not, but your father is. I'm like, no, really, I'm not African. And he got upset. He was like, you don't have to be ashamed of where you're from. Just accept it today. I'm like, no, I'm not African. But he won't take no for an answer. He had me back in the corner with a spear this long. He's like, I'm not going to play with you. <laughs> hey, I'm making house. I appreciate you guys. Y'all been an awesome crowd. Enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> 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 Thank part of the show. You guys are about to leave knowing something. You are being so entertaining. Yeah. You are so, do it in red, do superhero in red. You are so entertaining right now. Woo! It's like, yeah! It's an electric bolt in my head. <laughs> All right, uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick out a card that you guys filled out. Uh, we're gonna call your name, and you guys, if you want, you can stay in your seats, because, I mean, in Chicago, we probably ate, like, cheese fries for breakfast, and I don't want you to have to move around too much. Then we're going to ask you some questions, and if you get an answer Watch correctly, the then we're going to give away prizes. Are you guys excited? Wow. San Francisco, are you excited? Wow. Are you guys high a little bit? You guys are probably so high. 
Y'all are, you want him. He's, he's like, <laughs> shut up. All right, go ahead, pick out the name. Do we have Yvonne C? Oh. Oh. What's up? Okay, good. Good, 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 good. How are you? Good. Were you in a slasher film? Do you need help? You got a lot of fucking cuts on those pants. <laughs> okay, good. So we're gonna ask you a trivia question. The trivia question is gonna be on the screen. Um, assuming somebody in the back will move uh, slides. If they don't, we'll look at Mickey Housing talk some shit in a minute. <laughs> no, okay. All right, good. Our first question is, uh, what is a souk? And if you would like, you, you can ask the audience for support. What is souk? What does that mean? That's in the title of our show. Uh, see, it's working. See, somebody's listening. All right. What is a souk? She won. Where's, the, where's our prizes? Come on, dude. Huh? You won, yes. It's a bazaar, a marketplace. It's a very good It's in the Middle East and Mediterranean. Tell them what you want. So, uh, you want to get a gift certificate to get Gino's so you can come back. You get 20 bucks. Order some shit. That's a big ass pizza. That's a nap. That's a nap. Hell yeah. Okay, good. We got some more, we got some more questions. Thanks so much question. All right. Um, our next person is Lydell Smith. Dude, that's cheese fries in the morning. What is up? You good? You, you can't. Okay, we're gonna ask you a question. What's our next question? All right, so an Arab is um, someone from Iran. B, uh, someone who belongs to an ethnic group. C, all Uber drivers. <laughs> D, someone who's Muslim. And ancient... You can ask a white friend if you need to. It's what? Be. Someone who belongs to an ethnic group, and that is true. Yay! All right. Fantastic. Most Uber drivers are. I'm just saying. I myself was a little and an Uber driver, and I'm Muslim. Just saying. It's part of our religion. <laughs> okay. Next one. We got Nancy. Uh, something Alfavo. Skip. Skip. Nancy? Are you Nancy? What's her name then? Huh? <laughs> it's definitely Nancy. Are you Nancy for real? Then what the fuck are you talking for? <laughs> Just because you look like Lenny Kravitz with your beautiful ass fucking afro? I could do that shit. Give me another card. I'm feisty. Right? Nancy's here. Nancy, where's Nancy? Oh, Nancy, turn up. Nancy, Na Nancy, so Nancy you got beef with Lenny Kravitz. I'm just saying, he, I'm just saying he's busting your balls. Nancy, are you ready for some more questions? You're trying to steal a gift from me. Are you ready? I'm gonna look at this. Do I look like I'm in a frame right now? <laughs> okay. All right. Our next question. You ready? All right. Which one of these was invented in the Arab world? A toothbrush, hospitals, coffee. Algebra, this body, what? <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> oh, <Nancy. laughs> Shut up, kids. Huh? The last one? Is that your final answer? You don't want to pull like a cousin or an Arab in here? Okay, guys, the last one. Let's go to the next screen. Next screen. Next screen. We don't know the answer. Um, all right, we're going to move to the next question. No, we didn't answer. Oh, we have the answer. All answers are correct. Like this body. Like this body. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry, Nancy. Next time. Okay, good. Hey, focus, guys. This is that. Yo, you came here for laughs and homework. All right. Uh, we got Matt Campbell. You got some shit to say? You got oh, okay, good. Matt? Huh? Like tell well, yeah, you're gonna win some like either pizza or what, what where's your where's the prizes doing? They, they're in my pocket, they don't worry about the prizes. See, classic Arab man. man. Oh, like, uh, you don't wanna push them too much. Don't tell and me they start smacking. I'm like, hey, you you please, please don't know. I don't know why I'm talking like that, son. Like tell listen, you're gonna get some juices in you. You're gonna be one healthy son of a bitch. I'm just saying. <laughs> She's gonna get deep dish. She's gonna run slower than normal. <laughs> No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Okay, yeah, we're going to get you, because um, we have a great sponsor. Gino's East and Surf City Squeeze City are giving up all these gift cards, so we're going to give out a lot of juice. 
Surf City Squeeze is not net. It's actually called City Press. I think I just gave away a really cool brand. That's a shit though, isn't it? The mall? Fucking it's great. But we're not talking about them. We're talking about City Press because they're our sponsor. I fucked that up royally. Let's talk about more about the Middle East. Yeah. Great time. Who did we pick out a name? We pick out a name. Listen, we're working together well. Oh, we're gonna get it. Listen, we're doing great. We're gonna get an arranged marriage. All right. Um, Teresa Musa. Dum 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 dum. Teresa. Hi. Okay, we. Oh wait, we we picked the reading name. Matt over there. Teresa, we're gonna give you a hug later and a prize. Matt, talking shit. Why don't you tell us then, Mr. Smarty Pants? Why don't you tell us how many religions? Uh, name four specific religions that are practiced in the Middle East. And you can't look it up. Hey, hey, by now, you can't look it up. Okay, Just look it up quick, kid. Huh? No, 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 Matt. We're gonna show on. I fucked up. White, white woman to white man, and I apologize. I, uh, I apologize for this infraction. I, uh, I do believe that I only uh, tax account. Anyway, do you know? Do you want to pass it to Teresa? Do you want to do a pass? I'm sorry, what? I feel like he's doing an open mic right now. Next question. Anyways, what's the answer? How many, anybody here know how many religions are practiced in the Middle East? Do you know any of the four that are practiced there? What is it? And? 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 Sikh is it? Very good. You guys are good. You guys are good. That's in India. We've got Baha'i, Islam, Druze, Zoroastrian, Monism, Judaism, Christianity, and Alism. Thank you guys for uh, for playing with our fuck ups. And everyone's going to get some. Yeah. So you know what? Everybody's getting hugged when y'all leave. You know, everybody's a winner here tonight. Yes, everybody. everyone. Almost everybody's a winner. Yes, everyone who came early saw cooters and lace. You came early, you know it was a prize. All right, you guys. I wasn't here earlier this morning, but uh, I was here last night setting up this uh, lovely room. And um, if you guys reach under your tables, oh. you might also be winners. <laughs> Feel under, the, under tables. the tables, huh? Is there cards? Chicago, you can see it regularly at the Laugh Factory and Zanies. Give it up for Gwen LaRocca! Turn 34. 